Boil water, cook fast, and survive. Get yours today, KellyKettleUSA.com. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at TreyerWilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining Mountain Woman Radio. I hope you're all doing well. It has been very dreary here in northern Idaho, and I will be thankful for some sunshine, but we've got a lot of awesome, awesome things going on, and I wanted to share them with you quickly. Our gift-giving guide is live and available to all of you. There are special offers, awesome uh, companies that are within the guide, and individuals offering different services. These are all reputable people, people that we use, people that we Uh, thoroughly enjoy their products. So I encourage you to check that out, and you can find that quickly at treyerwilderness.com slash giving guide. I also wanted to let you know that my How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle is available for pre-sale. My book will be out um, in December, and we are offering that on a pre-sale right now on our website, and you can find that directly on the sidebar of our website as well as in the gift guide. And my class will start up in January. We have that available for pre-sale right now, too, at a really great price. And that is getting organized in a crazy busy world. And I look forward to sharing with you all of my tips and tricks and programs and means of keeping organized out here in the wilderness. Because if I was not organized, I'd be sunk. And I really, truly feel that organization skills is the are the key to success in anything. You need to be organized um, if you want to be successful, and I want to help people with that. So you can quickly check that out as well at treyerwilderness.com slash getting organized. And today we have a really fun guest. This is a good friend of mine, and she has some great new things to share. She's been on the show before, and I, I look forward to having you listen in on this. I have the privilege to have Lisa Bedford, the survival mom, joining me today. Lisa, thank you so much for coming back on here. You're welcome, Tammy. It is like just chatting with an old friend. (laughs) So it's my it's my it's my privilege and uh, pleasure. Well, thank you. And likewise, we always we 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 always end up getting to catch up when we get on these shows. We we're both so busy, but we still stay connected. And it's having that good friend that when you do finally get a chance to reconnect, you start right where you left off. So it's awesome and. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Seems that way. Yep. <laughs> but Lisa, uh, for my audience um, that may not be familiar with you, why don't you share a little bit about yourself and about your website and, and some of the things you have going on there? Sure. Well, you know, I I am in every respect a typical mom. And one thing that I noticed, uh, well, since I became a mom, actually, is that moms tend to worry. Mm-hmm. And several years ago, I guess 2009, when my husband's business began to slow way down, this, uh, the, you know, there was a, actual an economic depression that occurred right around then, I was worried. And I began to thought, you know, what can I do? I'm just saying, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have a little business I ran out of my home. But I wanted to be proactive. And I think most women want to deal with problems or prefer to deal with problems before they happen. We like being proactive. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, that's the popularity of, the, you know, of your, uh, you know, your upcoming class is how to, you know, get organized. We want to be organized. And that's why all these women magazines, they tell us how to you know, put our lives together because we want to actually live that kind of life and yet worry creeps in. Yeah. And so I began to put things in place that actually helped me worry a lot less. And I found out that what I was doing was called prepping. I had no idea what a prepper was. But to me, it was common sense. And yeah. so I started a blog about six and a half years ago called the survivalmom.com. 
And my goal really is to help moms worry less and enjoy their lives and their families more. And that is what I write about, whether it's how to put together a winter, um, you know, vehicle kit, you know, in case you have a breakdown, or whether it's, you know, how to teach kids about tough, you know, about tough things that happen in life, whatever, uh, whatever. There are 1,700 articles on my blog. And so all with the goal of really helping moms worry less. Yes. Awesome. And you do a very good job of that. Her website is just loaded and such great Thanks. information, such great information. <laughs> now you, Thank you. You have some really awesome series on your website that you started this year um, <clears throat> that are exceptionally um, informational on, on topics. Mm-hmm. You know, part of my goal, my, my blog is like, it's part mommy blog and it's part survival blog. Mm-hmm. We're kind of, we kind of, it kind of straddles there, something, you know, something in the middle. And um, there are some areas of survival and preparedness that a lot of the websites don't spend much time on because they're not fun. It's, you know, choosing the right knife is way more fun than trying to lose 10 pounds, <laughs> you know, or, you know, getting yourself, you know, better, better physical condition or saving money. I mean, those are the areas that aren't very glamorous and yet they're, they're critical. Oh, yes. They actually will make or break your, you know, your health and your survival, uh, and ability to cope with whatever. And so last January, I started two series. One is called the 52 Weeks Savings Challenge. Every single month this year, we have posted uh, something that presents the bargains for that particular month. And typically, these bargains are pretty traditional. You know, so you know that the day after Halloween, all the Halloween candy is going to be on sale. So a lot of the information in these uh, articles are timeless. And if someone is interested in jumping into this 52-week savings plan, they can just do a, a search for 52 weeks, and it will bring up the entire series. And the idea is you just save a little bit of money every single week for a year and you end up with something like, I don't know, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars or close to it by the end of the year. And I know some families, they've doubled up. If mom works and dad works, well, then both of them are in on the six weeks, uh, this 52 week savings plan. Other people say, you know, I'm going to do it backwards. I'm going to start, you know, on the 52nd week. You're supposed to save, or no, yeah, the 52nd week, you're supposed to, supposed to save $52. Well, the 52nd week is actually the week right after Christmas. And so some people have looked at that and said, I'm dead broke. I'm going to save my $52 and work my way back. So the week of January 1st, there they are saving, putting aside your $52. And then each week after that, it goes, you know, 52, 53, and the last week of the year, you're saving a buck. And pat yourself on the back, you did it. So that was one series. And I even have a Facebook page devoted only to saving money with this 52-week savings challenge. Uh, the second series is really increasing your bank of skills. Yeah. It's called the Skill of the Month Club. And so um, some of the skills we've covered are things like canning or handicrafts, like a knitting and crochet and quilting. Um, this month it is DIY prepper projects. Next month, I think December is learning how to make different kinds of, um, like, handcrafted lights. You know, whether you put a solar lamp together or, you know, just an oil lamp, just having different kinds of lights in the household, and we'll have some articles on those. So every single month, you can go to my blog again and just type in Skill of the Month, and that will bring up the whole series, and you can, um, you know, look for something new to try. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and you touched on so many things there, you know, being able to save money, and, and I love that people spun that around and started with their $52 and worked backwards because, mm-hmm. you know, that way you're not, you're not voiding yourself from the program because you feel it's not something you can do. You're, you're uh, putting a spin on it. So there's certainly ways to do that with everything and, and being able to put money aside so that you have the money there to use for maybe your skills of the month, you know, combining the two. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. And, and, and you touched on that so much with the physical part of things because we always say that out here. If you're not fit and you, you need to evacuate or whatever the case may be, you know, you're, you're going to be in danger right off the bat because you're not in good shape. So that's something that we really push to is just staying in good physical shape as part of right. the preparedness plan, you know. 
Right. And I have a Facebook page for that, and it's called Skinny Survival Moms. Mm-hmm. Our goal is not to be skinny, but our goal is just to really, you know, feel good about ourselves and have that level of fitness and physical strength. But, you know, as you were talking, Tammy, I realized that these different areas are constantly ongoing. You never, ever reach a point. I mean, you look at someone who's incredibly physically fit, and every single day or a few times a week, they're out there maintaining that, at least, if not improving it, and money. You know, you're always trying to set more money aside or budget what you have or you want to invest. And uh, the skills, there's always something new to learn. A lot of times, I think the pitfall in the whole survival prepper world is that you put together your everyday everyday, uh, carry kit, Every day, yeah, you, yeah, your EDC, and you're done. Yeah. And you put together your emergency kit. You put your, your bug out bag, and you're done. Yeah. And a lot of it, it's like it has a sense of finality where you just sit back and say, okay, now I'm prepared. Yeah. So I've really zeroed in on areas that always need fine-tuning at the very least. Yes. as not, you know, some massive overhaul or improvement. And I think that helps us all feel like, you know, we're staying on track with getting prepared, even if we're not, you know, uh, we don't feel like, okay, I'm not ready for doomsday preppers yet, right. you know, but hey, you know, I've lost 10 pounds and I can, you know, I can lift, you know, heavier weights than I could before. And so yeah. it's just that ongoing process, which is a lifestyle. It is, it is. And that's exactly how, you know, we could be considered homesteaders, we could be considered off-grid livers, we could be preppers, mm-hmm. but we really void all of those because this is a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle choice and one that we have molded to our liking, one we've molded to uh, what fits our needs, and and it's 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 awesome. And it's like you said, with exercise, you know, not only do you have the gratification of losing that ten pounds and feeling better, but exercise is a de-stressor. Exercise is something mm-hmm. that helps your body to run like it's supposed to, and detoxes when maybe things would get sluggish if you're just sitting. So it has so many more purposes than just the you know being able to lift the other. The, the next uh, pound weight, you know, type of thing. It, it really is an overall mind, body, you know, and, and even um, spirit kind of thing. And it's, it's, it is key to have mm-hmm. it in your lifestyle. And you had also mentioned about the packs. And that's one of the things that we really um, encourage people to do because so many people put their packs together and they set them aside and they've just purchased all those really awesome new fandangled things that are in their pack and they and they're wonderful but they never take the time to go out and learn the skill of using them and that is like so huge and that's a lot of what you touch on too is you know using those skills and 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 we practice out here and fine tuning things cuz even though you know you know how to ride a bike if you don't do it for a long time you're going to struggle when you first get back on it so mm-hmm. we always try to encourage people to practice your fire skills you know, like right now we have winter coming. You can only practice doing fire skills in the snow in the winter time. So, you know, you have a, a limited window and, and don't miss the opportunity to be able to really fine tune yourself and make sure that you are able to, you know, do the things that you would do normally in, in adverse weather and things like that, too. Well, that's a good point. You know, we don't really think that there are certain skills where you have to just jump in during that window of opportunity yeah. to learn them. Because, hey, the next time, you know, it's, around here it floods quite often. Right. And so there are some things that we need to learn about, you know, flood safety. We need to teach our kids. But when it's bone dry and it has to rain in a few weeks, you know, that's not the time to, you know, start worrying about, well, it is actually the time to put things into place. But as far as the practical application, it's like, when there's a heavy rainfall, when there's a storm, you know, the snowstorm, you know, that's an ideal time to, you know, start practicing what you've been reading about and uh, you've put your supplies together. Yeah. Well, you know, put it into action. Yep. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and I, on t- my two shows prior, I talked about my husband and I going out. We went out for an elk hunt, and the place we wanted to camp was on – the only way to get there was a, a vertical slope that was – which we couldn't see the bottom of the mountain from the top, but ended up being a half, an, half a mile vertical slope that was wet and slippery. Mm. And, you know, sometimes you're in situations where you're, the unexpected happens, and um, like I'd mentioned in the show, my health hadn't, isn't, hasn't been good and isn't good at the moment, and – I was really pushed out of my comfort zone, which honestly has not happened to that degree in a very long time. 
but it was quite mm-hmm. something and it was very empowering. So that's something that comes along with those moments yes. is when you're practicing, you know, you've got empowerment and, 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 and the benefit of knowing that you have mastered something. So, you know, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone because that's something that I shared in that show is that when you step out of your comfort zone, you are heading into the best part of life because on the other side of the, your comfort zone is the best stuff that's out there. It's, it's, I love that. Yourself, you're right. You know, you've pushed yourself to a point where you, you've, you now pass what scared you. So now you're waiting for the next thing that might scare you, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's just, it, it opens so many doors. So, you know, if, if you folks are concerned about pushing yourself out of comfort zones and trying these things or doing, you know, using the things in your kit, don't be afraid to, you know, that's, that's, it, it's mm-hmm. really key to push yourself out of the comfort zone and just, uh, Exper- experiment and experience these things. Great advice. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take a short break to hear some words from our sponsors because the second half of our show, I am really excited about. You have something really awesome to share. So we will we will uh, pause here for a second and be right back. The new Pioneer Magazine, taking the skills and techniques of yesteryears and combining it with solar, hydroponics, and various other advancements of today, creating the most robust pioneering magazine on the market. In addition to the new Pioneer Magazine, they also have available the American Frontiersman Magazine, taking you back to a more primitive time, and both magazines can be found at newpioneermag.com. Get your copies today and be prepared for tomorrow. Do you have a loved one or are you suffering from celiac disease or a gluten intolerance? Trying to find that perfect flour? Whether you are baking cookies, flaky pie crust, or baking breads from scratch, or you are looking for a quick cake from a package, look no further. Better Batter offers non-GMO gluten-free products with an assortment of packaged items as well as flour packaged in varying sizes, including their bulk sizes. Perfect for those of you that are practicing your preparedness skills. Better Batter is not just another gluten-free flour. It's what you have been searching for. Visit betterbatter.org. Do you have your free digital subscription to Prepare Magazine yet? If not, then hurry over to preparemag.com and start getting each monthly issue sent directly to your inbox. It's easy. All you have to do is go to preparemag.com, enter your name and email address, and you're subscribed. Consider signing up for the premium membership for past issues and exclusive resources. You can even subscribe to the beautiful print version of Prepare Magazine. Visit preparemag.com and choose the option that's most valuable to you. Prepare Magazine, encouraging, empowering, and enriching your journey. Fall is here. This year, get your Christmas shopping done early and give the gift that keeps on giving for years to come. Everyone would love to receive a Kelly Kettle, especially for emergency preparedness, camping, scouts, fishing, or any other outdoor activity. No batteries, no gas, no worries. All you need is a handful of sticks and twigs, and you'll have boiling hot water in three to five minutes. The Kelly Kettle is the most versatile and valuable piece of camping or emergency preparedness equipment you can own. It's lightweight, portable, and durable enough to last for years. And there's no running costs or fuel canisters to buy, ever. You can start a fire and boil water ultra-fast in even the worst weather, protected from both the wind and rain. You can boil water and cook food all at the same time. Right now, you can get a special discount on the Kelly Kettles or Kelly Kettle Ultimate Kits by using our special promo code, TRAYER5. Go to kellykettleusa.com and enter the promo code in the coupon box during checkout and receive $5 off their already low prices. On top of that, if you order a Kelly Kettle Ultimate Kit, they'll ship it to you free. Have the most versatile compact camping kit and get it for a great price. All at kellykettleusa.com. Or give them a call at 208-359-3123. Kelly Kettle backs up every kettle they sell. Boil water, cook fast, and survive. Get yours today. KellyKettleUSA.com Okay, we are back and we are talking again with Lisa Bed from The Survival Mom. And you can find her at TheSurvivalMom.com. And Lisa, I, we've been talking about great stuff, but it all kind of is leading into this next really awesome thing you have to share. And I'm not going to blow it for you. I'm just going to let you take over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, when my first book came out, I think it was 2012. It's just called Survival Mom. It is a, a full-length, 300-some-page uh, family um, 
and not just family, but it's just a full-length survival manual. Mm-hmm. More along the lines, not so much uh, the urban, not so much the um, off-grid lifestyle, mm-hmm. but it covers things like, you know, preparing for emergencies and food storage and so on. But there was one area in the book, and it has to do with emergencies, emergency evacuations that caught my attention. In fact, it was a skill of the month uh, earlier this year, because if there is one thing that we really aren't prepared for, it is the suddenness. Mm-hmm. of some events yeah. that require us to get out. And if we don't get out, whether it's fire or flood or, you know, perhaps a riot, a lot of times they're very, very unpredictable. Yeah. And you have to put those things in place and be ready to react in an almost mindless manner yeah. where you know where the kit is and you've maybe even practiced going and getting it out of that particular closet or you know you reach into that kit and you know exactly where the flashlight is and maybe where a face mask is. And... Um, so it was the whole idea of really delving more into the idea of emergency evacuations, and that's the name of the book. Yeah. It's emergency evacuations, uh, get out fast when it matters most. And uh, it's on Amazon right now, and I'm excited about it because it's my first full-length book since Survival Mom came out, I guess, about three years ago or so. Yeah. And um, my one of my dreams, I guess you could call it, maybe a long-term goal, it has been to have a series of these more in-depth guides. And so Survival Mom, the original book, it's excellent. I mean, I wrote it. I love it. But also there are, you know, I can't, there was no, you know, we have have a chapter, you know, with maybe 30,000 words devoted to just emergency evacuations. doesn't make sense, you know, unless you're going to write an encyclopedia. So this is a kind of an encyclopedia, the beginning of an encyclopedia set, I guess. And the series is called Survival Mom's No Worries Guide. And I'll be putting in the hands of, you know, moms and women and anybody just uh, a more in-depth guide in different subjects. So this first one is all about emergency evacuations. Excellent. And it's, it's, it's an awesome book. And I love the fact that you're, you've expanded this into a no worries guide because there's so many topics that we could touch on. And like you mentioned in the first half, that there's so many um, websites that don't touch on certain topics and um or certain topics that they're really vague on and and these are the ones that you know this will give you the opportunity to really expand on and help and i was blessed with the opportunity to uh be able to read through her book and this is a great great book because so many people in these situations when you have an emergency evacuation one that you can plan for or one that is just sudden you know many people if not experiencing these things or pre-planning or thinking these things through, they panic. And it's mm-hmm. it's good to have your thoughts rounded um, on these subjects. So I'm, I'm really excited for your series. And folks, you can easily find Lisa's book um, if you're on the road by just going to treyerwilderness.com slash no worries guide. And you'll find her her emergency evacuations book, and it will link up to all the others that she will have in the series as they come out if you use that link. So, um, But Lisa, explain a little more um, your thoughts on this book as far as the in-depth part of it, um, maybe some mm-hmm. of the things you've covered. Yeah. Well, when I, you know, when I was interviewing people who have had to evacuate for different reasons, um, our family had to leave our house once very, very quickly because some powerful chemicals had been used in this uh, housing pro- home improvement project, and we were completely unprepared for just the intensity wow. and actually very dangerous levels of fumes. Wow. And we were racing to get out. I had some things packed. You know, I always have, like, some things pre-packed for family trips and so on. So I had those, but um, – and that was an advantage. But I was talking to other people, and in the book there is a story of Marilyn whose family uh, – their home – caught on fire, yeah. and it actually ended up being a fatal fire in which one individual was killed, and she just explains how fast it happened, yeah. and her son was able to go back just really, really quickly and get, like, her wallet and a set of keys, which really was a huge help to them because they gave transportation and some funds, you know, for hotels and so on, um, but even a brief, you know, entrance back into this house, he ended up with some uh, some damage to his lungs to the smoke inhalation. Okay. That's an example of an urgent evacuation. And that's the one that happens very frequently when you just have to get up fast. And you may not, you may not have minutes. Right. You may be down to just literally seconds in order to get out and save your life and 
This is something you want to teach your kids. The other kind of an evacuation, Tammy, is one that you experienced, although you didn't actually have to go through with it, and that is a planned evacuation. And in your case, um, I don't know, was it two or three months ago or so, there were some pretty intense wildfires, and you told me about your family. um, I mean, you even had your truck loaded up, and it was even pointed. You know, I was impressed. You even had thought it pointed in the right direction. Oh, yeah. So there's no backing up with a trailer and, you know, trying to maneuver a trailer or anything to get out, and you've made a decision. This is what we do with our livestock, yeah. and this is what we do with, you know, our equipment. And you have to evaluate, but you had time. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's just a few hours, you have time to give it some thought, and that's a planned evacuation. So yeah. I know in the first part of the book, I go into those in more detail, and it's kind of how to think about and plan but for both of those different types of evacuation. Right. Um, and that is, that's critical. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. A big part of it is just the forethought, whether, you know, what you do now on this side of an emergency like that will make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, you you know, this all leads into the things we were talking about um, from the first half, too, is that, you know, having your, your go bags ready. You know, if you know where they are and, and you've got a sudden evacuation like like with the fire like that, it takes two seconds to grab that pack and go. And you know you've got yeah. your essentials. And when we were in this situation, there were wildfires all over out here in the Pacific Northwest. And so it was it was a very dry, dry summer. It was very scary. And that was something that we hadn't experienced before ourselves. Um, we had a fire threat like two years ago, but not to this degree. And it was just like a, t- a, a tinderbox out here. So it was pretty mm-hmm. scary. But one thing that we did do when the fire started reaching Idaho is we sat down and we made a list of if we had to go fast, what would be the things we would grab so that we could have them ready. If we had to go, um, you know, long term and it's looking like, you know, the whole place is going to go because we only have one way out also, which was another Mm -hmm. concern. Um, So we had the list of all the things we would need, and that list consisted of everything we would need to set up our our wall tent and start all over again, all our tools. Yeah. You know, at that point, because if if it was coming through like that, we would fell trees Mm -hmm. and hope that our house was still standing, but if not, in most cases, not as intense, as dry, and everything with everything that was going on. The other option is, there's a river not too awful far. So worst case scenario, we're trapped back here. We head to the river with wool blankets over our head and sit in the water, you know, as our only option. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but thinking those things through, you know, certainly made it a lot more comforting, yeah. even though it was an awful thing to, to comprehend. It still gave us, you know, a structure to what we what we were going to do. We had meeting places set up in case my husband was out and mm-hmm. or I was out. You know, my son's a new driver, you know, trying to give him guidance as well. Plus, my son is high-functioning autistic, which can also play a role. So you got to consider, you know, your elderly and your um, right. children and, and special needs children, which you cover. And... Mm-hmm. But it's just all those things you got to think about, and there's no sense thinking about all that stuff at the second you need to. That's stuff that you could think about all the time right. and, and have lists and things to you know to really keep yourself. It puts such a huge comfort level to to your day to day life, which is what you are trying to accomplish in everything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree, and when you have. Um... It's sort of like setting your clothes out the night before. Yeah. My husband, this is this is his habit. You know, he'll, you know, right before he goes to bed, you know, he'll go off. You know, when he takes a shower, and he'll have, you know, his he'll just take whatever he's going to wear the next day to work, and they're right there handy for him. He doesn't even have to think about it. Right. He doesn't have to go to his closet and say, "Oh my gosh, I was really hoping I was going to wear my blue shirt, but it's in laundry." Right. You know, gosh, do I have time to you know go hurry and put it in the washer and dryer real quick. You know, what if I spritz it? You know, something so doesn't smell. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That, it's like you take the you take those uh, the need for those decisions completely out of the equation. Yeah. So when he wakes up, there is no question in his mind what he's going to wear. Well, what if it was like that in a dire emergency, and you didn't even have to give it a thought? You know, your kids knew exactly what to do. Okay. When we moved into our current home, I noticed that in my daughter's bedroom, she has one window. I think it's on the small side, and it's kind of high. We live in an old house. Okay. And back in those days, apparently, you know, they okay. didn't um, put windows where we're used to having them. Okay. And so she will have to, if she ever had to get out, she actually would have to 
you know, stand up on something in order to get out. But we've talked about that. Okay, you know, Olivia, what would you stand up on in order to climb out of this window? Okay. My son's bedroom has two decorative windows. Um, <clears throat> they face the front of the house, and there are no screens. There is no way to get out. So I have talked to him about items that he has in his bedroom that he actually could use to break the windows. Sure. And he's atta- very attached to his cat. And I've had to go through again and again and again. You don't worry about your cat. You know, leave the door, leave doors open, leave windows open, and hopefully they'll get out. Right. Um, you go over those things now, and then you go over them again. Okay. And maybe three or four months later, you go over them again. And when or if the time ever comes, then no one has to think about it. There's no decision-making. I think that maybe decision-making, Tammy, is what probably slows a lot of people down and may even cost lives as you're trying to decide, do I leave the cat? Do I leave the dog? Do I grab the birdcage? You know, do I need this? And at that moment, you may have no time for any decisions your brain is just going to be screaming, run, and that's what you got to do. Yep. Well, and here's something to put that into full perspective. Okay, you go to Baskin-Robbins, just for example, because I picked them because they have, what, 52 flavors of ice cream? Okay, how many <laughs> of us go in there and instantly go, I want that one? You don't. It, we're all indecisive in our everyday decisions. Yeah. If we have the option to go to town or stay home, can we make a quick decision? Yeah. Oftentimes not. I, I, I struggle with that, you know, and it's that stupid, simple little decisions we have to make. And that's exactly what Lisa's getting at there. Is, and, and just to think about that, if you put it into perspective, how difficult it is for us to make some of the most simple decisions sometimes in life. That's why if you have these things thought out ahead of time, it makes it so much easier. And like you said, um, touching back on those on, on how you wish to handle things is so important. It's just like practicing your survival skills and knowing that you have them under your belt and then practicing them some more because mm-hmm. you know, it, it's so important, so, so important to wrap your head around that. And you had said about us with the trailer, our trailer is a 24-foot gooseneck trailer. And for us to have to turn that around in the tight spot that we have here, that would could have taken, you know, it could have been a matter of life and death if we had to really bolt out of here, you know. So thinking to that degree, but if you plan ahead of time and you really think about things, and and what's really awesome is my family and I are all so on the same page. So we just like, we just kind of, where one stops thinking, the other one picks up, and we just all kind of complement each Mm -hmm. other in that regard. And once you start thinking about all these things and really start wrapping your head around these things, if you're new to preparedness, prepping, any of this, it will become second nature and it'll be so much easier to process than to sit and wait and make right. those decisions later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Boy, that's, you know, the whole idea of making decisions, I don't even know if I put that specifically in my book, Tammy. <laughs> I may have to go and <laughs> do some quick edits there. Sometimes when you talk things over, maybe yes. this is even maybe a little survival tip, but when you talk to someone, yes. even about like your plans, if you are, the only person in your family making the plans, you you know, you can probably do a, quite a good job. But I find that when I'm talking with others, that's when sometimes I get my best ideas. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. this isn't something you want to make sure that every, you communicate to everyone in the family. Yeah. And your kids, you know, they may have ideas for getting out fast. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know why son and my daughter both. When they have suggestions, I listen to them. Oh, yeah. They're very perceptive, and kids sometimes, you know, they may mm-hmm. think of things that we just would never cross our minds. Like yep. kids, I sometimes ask me, "Well, mommy, why are you so forgetful? Why do you call me by, you know, your sister's name all the time? Why do you call me Aunt Renee?" And you know, <laughs> and it's like, you know, my mind is so cluttered. Yes. I have like how many decades of stuff in my brains, and they have a whole lot less. Not that they're <laughs> not that they don't have anything in their brains. But they're just, their brains aren't as cluttered, right. and very, very, very often they have excellent suggestions for things around the house, and yeah. my daughter will make observations about, you know, maybe things our family needs to improve upon. Sure. So by all means, you know, have a family meeting and yes. say, okay, you know, let's pretend that, you know, five minutes from now we have to run out of the house as fast as we can, and we might not be able to come back. Yeah. What would you take? Yeah. And what would you do? How would you get out? Yeah. And just kind of, you know, do it in a way that isn't going to scare anybody. Right. And as kids get older, they'll start understanding. Oh, you know, that's why my mom had us do this drill. That's why we have these emergency things packed. Yeah. Um, and you might even want to call them different things. You don't necessarily have to call it, you know, uh, 
get out of the house or you're going to die drill, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Call them things where, you know, you're taking, you're allaying the fear, not adding to it. Right, right. And just, just preparedness, you know, uh, planning is, is good. But you touched on something there with the kids because, you know, the other way I look at that too is we are teaching our children to understand this logic and what better way mm-hmm. to um, empower a child is to, um, once they start getting the gist of things and they do have their own ideas like that, what a way to empower a child when they do have good ideas like that. That's kind of like what we do when we're setting up, um, like when we teach kids to go out into the woods and set up their shelter and stuff like that, you know, is letting them do the things too. When you go out and practice your skills, you should be letting your kids practice those skills too. You know, some some parents are like, oh, I can't teach my kid fire skills. Oh, no, you want your kids to know mm-hmm. fire skills, but you need to teach them, you know, right. the, the mentality that it's not something that gets abused, just like a, a firearm, you know. So, but teaching kids to be a part of every aspect of this will broaden their horizons, mm-hmm. their thoughts, and it's really cool when they do come into the, you know, sit there at the table and they have an absolutely amazing idea and you know just imagine how that feels I mean we know how that feels for us when we get that pat on the back and and we've done something good you know same applies to our kids and the more you empower them and 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 they realize that they're you know they have worth the the more they will contribute as well which is just it's a really awesome thing to see well when I for my years when I was a teacher and even when I was a kid you know, very often when parents ask their kids, well, what did you do in school today? And the kids say, oh, nothing. <laughs> well, the reason I think they say that is because they didn't learn to do anything that they thought mm-hmm. was significant. Right. Yeah. And so they were learning, you know, their multiplication tables, or they were learning to diagram sentences, or they were writing a paragraph. To them, that wasn't a significant thing. But when you start asking them, you know, you mentioned, you know, building a fire safely. They're learning firearms training. And then you say, well, what did you do today? It's going to be a whole different story. (laughs) You know, you might not be able to shut them up, you know, for an hour. They're going to be telling you what they did because they realize that um, just intrinsically, inherently, what they learned, what they did was really important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is the advantage that we have as maybe preparedness-minded parents is – our kids, uh, we're teaching them things that are important, their lifelong skills, yeah. their maybe life-saving skills, and they're enjoyable. The kids are actually enjoying what they're doing. Absolutely. And you know, I said about stepping ourselves out of our comfort zone, by giving our kids the opportunity to do fires and learn how to shoot and, and use firearms and do those things, those are cool things. You know, in a kid's eyes, those are, those are cool things. In, sorry, in my eyes, those are cool things. So, yes. you know, to be able to incorporate the child into that, you are pushing them out of their comfort zone. You're also giving them something to really look forward to. And like you said, my son, if he, when he gets to do that stuff, I could sit and he would talk to me for hours on end about all the aspects of it. Cause he's very, uh-huh. um, he's got a very literal mind and sees all the fine details. And, um, that is just huge because one of the greatest gifts I've given my son inadvertently that I am now aware of is that he views life that nothing is impossible, and that is because that is how I view life. And I step out of my wow. comfort zone all the time. But to hear him tell me those and speak those words to me has yeah. just humbled me in such a big way because yeah. we don't realize the impact we have on our children just by our actions. And I've talked about that before, that our actions are more powerful sometimes than our words. So, you know, teaching your kids not to be fearful but to be, be um, prepared is, is a huge thing. And teaching them how to step out of their comfort zone is a huge thing because – Whatever they have to uh, endure in life, um, there's always mm-hmm. going to be comfort zones to step out of, and they will embrace those in such a different way if you teach them at a young age how to do it, and it's just simply doing it. When our kids are faced with a challenge or a scary scenario, it is empowering for them to have already gone through the thought process of what they would do if. Yep. And if there is, um, they have a few things, let's say, for emergencies packed in a backpack, yeah. Or they know how to call 911. They know how to get out of the house. They know, boy, any number of things. Yeah. Um, even in my book, I, uh, I cite an example of a 
um, I think she's a 40-some-year-old woman who is Down syndrome, and she has been taught by her family exactly what to do if they ever have to evacuate. Awesome. And that's empowering. She has confidence, and that, that same confidence is going to extend to anybody who knows what to do in a crisis. And even with a little, you know, like something around the house, let's say that a new mom, for example, um, her kid comes down with stomach flu, and boy, the first time that happens, you know, you're, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? Well, the time, you know, the tenth time that it happens with that kid or another kid, you know what to do. Right. And it's, it's building confidence. And so when we look at preparedness and things like this emergency evacuation preparedness, all of that, again, it just goes back to being practical. It does give the kids confidence in a crisis, and yet if it ever if that situation ever does arise, they know what to do to save their life. Yep. And that really is the whole point of, you know, the whole point of survival and preparedness is not to argue with people online over what is the best, you know, uh, kit for an everyday carry. Right. That's not the point of it. The point is when something actually happens, you're ready for it. Yep. So I hope my book helps. It's, it is, it focuses, it, it kind of narrows the focus down to emergency evacuations. But I really did try to uh, provide something for, you know, parents with infants in the home, elderly loved ones they may have to evacuate, special needs. Um, I try to touch on as many areas as I could, and I, I sincerely hope that it's helpful. Oh, I totally feel that it will be very helpful to so many. You know, your original book was... I thought it was just so awesome because there it was really helping someone that was green to the whole thought process of survival and preparedness. However, I read the book being very versed in it and still glean things from it. So um, I really feel that you this is a great book no matter what level you're at because you will glean things from it and um, I'm really excited to see what the rest of your series entails. So I'm real excited to be able to share this with everybody, and I'm really glad that you were able to come on. We are running out of time, but I wanted to open this up and uh, thank you, for starters, for joining me and, and um, open this up and let you um, provide any last words you might have for my audience. Well, your audience and my audience they have a lot in common. Yes. Um, they kind of want to hear what you have to say. You know, you live an off-grid lifestyle. I don't. Okay. Not interested in it, Tammy. <laughs> if they were forced upon me, you know, I could handle it. I have, you know, some equipment around the house, and we would be okay. But you know, I just, I, I've, I've just grown up suburban my whole life, and that's just the way it is. Right. Too old to change now, I think. But. You know what? We love our families, yeah. and we want the best for them, and we want them to be safe. We want them to be healthy, and whatever, wherever we come from, whether it is a homestead or off-grid or, you know, a busy, busy, you know, mom who works full-time and she lives in a city, we well, that's, that's kind of what binds us all together, yep. and so... Your readers and my readers, they want to love their families and they want to do their best for them. And so I hope that between the blog and my books and anything else that I produce, I hope that it's helpful, you know, regardless of someone's geographical location. That changes. Yeah. Someone could live off grid for a while and realize at a point we have to move back into the city. Our locations change, but uh, how we feel about our families and that uh, very deep sense of responsibility for them, that never changes. Absolutely. You know, ask a mom who's in her 90s and she <laughs> still worries about her kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. that cracks me up whenever, you know, some little, oh, I worry about my kids all the time. I'm like, dang, how old are they? <laughs> how old are they in their 70s? <laughs> that, you know, some things never change. Nope. Nope, and they won't. And that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome sentiments. And so true. You know, we are all on the same mission regardless where we are or what we do in life. You know, we're trying to protect our families and keep them safe and teach and guide regardless what age they are, you know. So it's just <laughs> awesome. And I, I treasure um, the fact that you've been on here with me and I treasure your friendship. Uh, I think that we we both have the same hearts to lead uh and, and guide and help other people, you know, so um, I just, I, I love being able to share knowledge with others and, and see them grow, so, and I know that is your, your heart's desire also, so again, thank you for joining me, Lisa, and, and everybody, thank You're you as well for joining me today, and um, again, you guys take care to our next show, and God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. 
and be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you. 